Hello and welcome to the Southern Stars Election 2020 podcast. My name is Siobhan Cronin and I am the news editor of the Southern Star. In this episode, our last before the election on Saturday, we have a very useful and interesting interview for anyone interested in local politics, Irish elections and how the whole system works. Jerome O'Sullivan is Cork's Deputy Returning Officer, which means he is the man who has the mammoth task of running a count centre on the day after the election. Jerome is no stranger to this role and has been a familiar face on the stage at the count centre in Clonakilty Community Centre for more years than he cares to remember. In this in-depth interview, he tells us about the logistics of getting a count up and running, the importance of security and timing, and why the PR system, while complicated, makes Irish elections such a fascinating blood sport. So Jerome, welcome. Thank you. And tell us now, uh, once an election is called, what's the very first task for you as Deputy Returning Officer? Well, for me, is I've got to secure the venue. Right. And Clannacilty has been the longest established town in which the count is held. And we have been lucky enough to have the facility of the Clannacilty Community Hall. So my first job is to secure the booking of the hall for the, the setup of the count the conduct of the count, and just in case there's a recount the, the day after as well. And what would happen if it was booked for something else? Well, I pres- well it's if, never happened yet. No, and I think that alternative arrangements would be made for the something for else. For the something because, else. <laughs> because the count would take pre- preference. <laughs> right. um, having done that, then I liaise with the Gardaí in relation to the security of the count centre for the, the polling day and night and for the conduct of the count itself. And then there are various other things like checking out the availability of furniture and seating tier, uh, sorting frames, which people are, some people refer to as pigeonholes, but mm-hmm. they are actually sorting frames. So all of that has to be put in place um, and away we go. Then staff, of course, mm-hmm. uh, sometime afterwards we look at how many staff we might need and we do that in relation to the electorate and what I do is I look at the electorate and I look at what the percentage turnout was in the previous elections and the electorate this time uh, is 66,000 which is quite high. Is that up or down? Oh it is up and just bear with me now. That's interesting. What did I do? Would well, that reflect people moving into the area now? Well, it's... it's um, what, what? Or people I hope all this fumbling isn't being... No. Anyway. <laughs> people coming um, back from abroad. Like, you see, the, the electorate now, without the supplement, and the, right. the, the supplement application's only closed yesterday, yesterday okay. so I don't have that figure as yet. But it stands at 66,000. Right. Whereas in 2016, it was 62,500. Right. So uh, it's, it's gradually been going up? Absolutely. Right. You, you can see that from 1997, where it stood at 49,382. It then went to 54,000, 61, 63, and 63. I know it's at 66. Right. And the difference between these figures, that in those figures, uh, it would be the supplement, mm. whereas we still have to add the supplement um, to the 66,000. So, yeah. right. so as you can see then we kind of say okay what percentage turnout will we have and the highest percentage we have had in Cork South West was in 2011, 73%. So if I apply the 73% to the 66,000 I get 48,000 papers. Right. Whereas in 2016 we down. had 43,500 so that gives me extra papers to be dealt with right. so you decide then proportionately how you might increase the staff numbers. Staff levels right. Can I ask you then about the returning officer's duty I think that's um, our county sheriff Sinead McNamara would be the Correct. designated returning officer and so what would her involvement be now in Cork South West on the day of the count would say? Oh she everything would be delegated to me Right. And um, when you were finding the venue and securing it, what were the top three things that you need? I presume size is one oh, thing. Oh, size, definitely. Um, size, parking is a big issue, like. Right. 
um, location within the town. Um, uh, you could have a tremendous venue miles outside it of a town and that's not going to be real of any commercial benefit to the town itself. Right, okay, you know. so it's, it's a good boost so, for Clannacilty on oh, the Oh, it is a great boost. And um, like I was born and reared in Clan and as a child I can remember counts being conducted in Clannacilty and I think that stemmed from the fact that the county sheriff of the day was resident in Clan okay. at the time. <laughs> so so Clan is, there for it, 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 it has inherited and it's the designated <laughs> Clan Centre for And they'll probably be worn out if it was moved at this stage, we'd, we'd imagine. That might just about <laughs> describe it. Yeah. Right. Now, um, so how do you secure the staff and then how soon do you need to engage them in theory, given that the count could go into a second or sometimes a third day so what criteria do you use to choose the people? Because obviously people need to be a bit like a, being on jury service. Well, you need to have an open-ended I, I time kind of, frame there. Well, OK, if I can kind of go back to the days when I was a scrutineer myself. Right. And I was in the employ of the Cork County Council. Which is the official name for the counters, we'll say, scrutineers. Am it's I right? a scrutineer. Yeah. Pe- pe- people refer to them as counters. If you put a bundle of papers in front of somebody, you can ask them to count them. These people are scrutinising the paper. Right. They're checking initially, is the paper a valid one? And then they're checking if the first preference is properly stated and that there is only the one first preference. So they're scrutineers. But when I was in that role, I was always booking annual leave when I knew I was on account. Right. And making provision that I was available should a, uh, a recount on it. So I'd imagine these people do the same. By and large, there are staff members of Cork County Council, staff members of the County Sheriff, and a few people then who would have experience in that field. Right. Yes. The, by and large, they're all experienced people in PR. Mm. But you would, in each team, as it were, have people doing it for the first time because it's a training exercise right. as well. And um, how are the boxes containing the papers relayed then from the polling centres? Because that is very crucial, am I right in saying, security-wise? Oh, absolutely, right. yes. Yeah. There is nothing more valuable than a sealed ballot box. Right. You couldn't put a value on it, I don't no, know. No, no, but, and the security around it. Right. Um, I think I mentioned to you off-camera that um, there are... Each constituency is broken into agency areas. Right. And the agent is initially responsible for distributing the ballot box and for receiving the ballot box at the close of poll. Uh, so an agent could receive up to 20 or 25 boxes. They are then collected under security and conveyed to the count centre. Who provides that security? Is that a guard? Guard the security. Right. And the sheriff? may provide her own security as well, as she does at the count centre. So they are then conveyed after close of poll to the count centre. And that would be part of my brief to have an overnight staff there to receive the boxes, check that every box coming in is sealed, is, well, is sealed mm. and that all the boxes are there. Right. And they are put then in ascending numerical order in preparation for the count. Right. So each polling station has a number. Absolutely. And it's based on that number then. Yeah. That they're and like, there's a, we, like each presiding officer then as well has to make out a ballot paper account. So when we receive, when the agent receives a box at close of poll, he or she checks the ballot paper account, and that tells us how many papers are in that box. Right. So there are staff overnight making sure uh, that they're it, It's all entered into um, a spreadsheet. Right. Um, and then the first operation, as it were, in the morning, which is generally referred to as the opening of the boxes, which physically it is, but in our terminology, it's the verification of the ballot paper account. Right. Because everything is checked and rechecked. It isn't that we doubt the presiding officers, but we check because unless we are absolutely certain of what the total poll is, 
you're in trouble. From there on. And uh, we do have the PR system here in Ireland, which I think is a relatively unique in Europe. I could be wrong. Some other countries have it, I think. But it can be seen as quite complicated for first-time voters because of the um, transfer system. And a lot of them are a little bit confused as to where they should put their twos, threes, fours and fives and why. So have you got a kind of a dummy's guide, we'll say, well, to the PR system and how it works? Well, the PR, I don't know why people would be confused about it because what a voter is doing on election day is expressing their preference for a person who they would like to represent. And the choice is entirely their own. Like in Cork South West now, we will have 12 candidates unless somebody withdraws. So a person can actually vote from 1 to 12 on the paper. And that is the true expression of PR. As, would you do that yourself? I'd, I've always? always done it myself. Right. Yeah, I have because I believe in it and I would vote the full paper. And even if there's someone on that ballot that you totally, we'll say, despise their policies, you still think well, they should get a tick from you? Absolutely. I, 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 I respect people who put themselves before the electorate. Right. And I think they deserve to be acknowledged. Whatever I might think about them personally or anything else, they deserve uh, to be acknowledged. Right. So I do vote the full paper myself. And I would encourage people to vote the full paper. Um, but they don't, they don't, like, they're not compelled to. Mm. And I would ask them to use the one, two, three. At the very minimum. One, two, well, yeah. One, you see, you'll see one, two, three with a dot and a comma or whatever, which says continue. Right. So I would ask them to continue their, until they run out. Of, maybe somebody, as you said, that they don't like, they may not want to do it. Stop then. But it's the true expression of PR is to vote for as many candidates as you wish. Right. Now, you were talking to me earlier about you had done a comparison between the single transferable vote and the PR system. And you had showed me that in the last election, it wouldn't have actually made a difference in Ireland if we'd had the first past the post in No, it, 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 like in, in relation to its effectiveness and, and um, this is just something I did myself out right. of curiosity of, of the 40 constituencies in 2016 uh, the same result would have been in 27 of them. Right, but But uh, in 13 of them you yes. would have had a different result. Right. And of that 13, six of those constituencies were in the Dublin area, okay. Dublin constituencies. Yeah. Right. So wh what is that telling us? Um, maybe it's telling us that people don't use PR enough, that, or they don't continue going down the paper. But there was an example in Cork South West at one stage where a candidate polled very well on the first count. Right. And actually didn't get elected, elected. subsequently. I think and you, thought, why? you said because they came in second, in fact. I the think they came count. in second, yes. Yeah, so quite a substantial but vote. That goes to show you the power of voting the full paper and transfers. Right. So more people, in the broader sense, wanted that person to represent them than just the people who gave them the first preference. Right. And I think that's the value of the PR. So, in effect, what happens is that when uh, you have your quota decided, if somebody reaches the quota, they're elected. If nobody reaches the quota, then you eliminate the person with the least votes, am Exclude. I right? Exclude. Yeah. Exclude Exclude them. Yeah. And yeah. their votes <laughs> are then yeah. well, what you, okay. redistributed. The, the first thing we do is, as I said, we have the verification of the ballot paper accounts and that gives us our total poll. The next job then is the papers are sorted into first preferences and in that there is a scrutiny for invalid papers as well. So all the invalid papers are put aside and they will be subsequently adjudicated on um, by the returning officer in the presence of the candidates. So having done that you then have your total valid poll. And from that you determine your quota. And you see then whether anybody has exceeded 
the quarter. And, and if just either reaching it or exceeding it, they are deemed elected. elected. Yeah. But the quota is to, it's a simple enough uh, mathematical um, the equation, am I, am I right? Yeah, yeah. the quota is the and total one. valid poll divided by the number of seats plus one. So in Cork South West it's divided four. by four and you add one to your answer. Right. And that's your quota. And you can't have more quarters than you can have seats. Of course. And um, so then you have your valid poll. And you, your quota. And your quota. And you check the totals for each candidate. If somebody has either reached or exceeded the quota, they're deemed elected. If that doesn't happen, you have to look at the lowest polling candidates um, and determine exclusion. Uh, you may have more than one candidate excluded right. on the same count. What happens then if you do with, if, the, with the transfers? Well, what you do then is you look, this is where PR kicks in, mm. you look for the next available um, preference. By and large, it would be a number two. In a case of a multiple exclusion, uh, which we have had on more than one occasion in Cork South West, for instance, if you had three candidates excluded on the first count, you could be looking for a number four. And can I ask you, why would you have three excluded and not just exclude them one it, by one? Well, you exclude a candidate. What you look at is the difference between the lowest candidate and the second lowest candidate. And if the, so if the figure that the lowest candidate has would not... Um, uh, sorry. If the figure that the lowest person has mm. is less than the difference than the, the next two... Right. It, you exclude two. And you're because if you did it's not a complicated system. <laughs> no, no, it's not. No. No, 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 but I just had to stop the thing there. Like what you look at is the difference between the candidates. And if you were to exclude maybe on a single basis, you could be giving votes or papers to one candidate and right. not improving their position. Okay. okay, okay, I got you, yeah. Yeah, what you have to look for, like some people um, think that the quarter is the thing that we're always looking at, and mm. we are, but we are also looking at the fact that will a distribution of a, either a surplus or an exclusion make any difference? to the total votes that a person could get in order that they would save their deposit or claim right. their election. Okay. So, so we are very we're, diplomatic as well. We are watching the quota and we are watching the other figure then which will entitle them to the return of a deposit or their election expenses which is a quarter of the quota plus one. Right. Okay, well, it's a, it's a very fair system when you well, look at yes, it. Well, yes, it is, yeah. The, but the like, there, the there are so many country. things you have to watch out for. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now, uh, another question I want to put to you was about electronic voting. Do you think we'll ever see the day no, we we'll have electronic no, voting? I don't in this think country? so, no. no, we, no. We've gone down that road. Well, I, we've, we've gone down that road quickly, and we? we have parked <laughs> that. And no, I don't think so. Right. No, and no. that's probably um, to make it even more of a good blood sport because I think. It would all be oh. over and done with a little bit too quickly for most people's so liking. No, there'd be no fun in it. No, no fun in it. And have you any good memories? Now you've been doing this for more than one or two years, well, I think, Jerome. Well, so when, when you said that, do you know what? No, you put me thinking because I joined the permanent staff of the county council in the courthouse in Cork in 1965. Wow. And I think my f first experience of a count was the following year. Right. In 1966, a in presidential a one. Oh, right. But in were Cork. you involved as a scrutineer? Oh, I, just scrut I was right. just thrown in at the deep end. Yeah. Yeah. And from then on, I have, in one capacity or another, been involved in elections since then. Right. So it's, it's a long time when you think about it. So have you seen some unusual ballot papers? Or I think you oh, mentioned well, you before you, about you, notes you, you found you, in I, I tell boxes. you now, there's a number of... The most frustrating thing as a returning officer is to see people spoiling their paper. Right. Why people go to the trouble of going into a polling booth and decorate or desecrate or whatever, I just cannot understand it. 
so you would you 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 would see some nice artwork and uh, some messages not so nice messages and all of that. But like, there's only one message a person can give with the ballot paper, yes, and that's to use it it's properly. A yes or no, basically. Uh, yeah. You know, let's say yes or no. Um, no, I have been fortunate enough that um, everything has gone well. Thank God. Um, unusual things, well, I think in 2016 we found a note in a ballot box, all right, uh, suggesting that a voter may have inadvertently put in their passport, right. but they hadn't. Very good. good and them. in one of the other constituencies there was a kind of a new definition, I suppose, of engaging in democracy. Somebody thought they had dropped their engagement ring oh, into Lord. the ballot box, but no, they hadn't. Oh, right. <laughs> that was quite a, scru yeah. a scrutiny uh, of that ballot uh, box, I'd say, was, for a yeah. while. My, my longest count, I suppose, I can remember being supervisor for the Carrigaline electoral area. Right. The papers were counted in the North Man in Cork in, in the local elections. 1999, yeah. Right. And I didn't finish until four o'clock morning, and I was had to drive back to Clan, and then head up the road the following morning for the European paper. So oh, that was a bit of our deal. It was a long one. But um, no, no, it's I like it. I enjoy it. Um, it's great. It is. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for coming in, Drum, and best of luck welcome. with this election thank you. on February the okay. 9th. We'll see you in Clannacilt. Very thank good. You. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Southern Star Election 2020 podcast. If you enjoyed it. Please make sure to rate, review and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Acast, Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts. OK.